So there's some fooler guy up here. Is it one of the locals? Is it uh, my fucking stalker? Is it Robert Pickrell? Is it one of the fucking Nazi? There's a right-wing sovereign movement. You got Zanis McDonald and the right-wing sovereign movement out of Costilla County. So is it one of Zanis's people? I'm a progressive. I give a damn about people. I don't believe in abusing children. So I've been getting a lot of bullshit ever since I've been actually a baby. So you have Barbara Williams here. So Barbara Williams is a white woman. And she used to paint her eyebrows on. Real ugly. Child abuser. Proud to be a racist. Dropped the N-word a whole bunch of times at Value City. Right at the cash register. When there was a black woman right in front of her. She was calling that woman the N-word. She also laughed hysterically at this racist joke. That her fucking husband was making about how black people look like monkeys. When they dunk a basketball. God, she buckled over with laughter. She's <laughs> Fucking funniest thing in the fucking world to her. One of my first uh, memories that I have is just me getting hit over and over again. As soon as I open my goddamn eyes, Kevin and Lucy dropped me off over at Barbara's house. I'm four or five years old. And I thought that this is Beulah's house. I got a great-grandmother, Beulah uh, Chitwood. So Beulah Chitwood, she was, you know, they put her in a apartment building. I thought it was an old people's home, but no, it was just a old, it was an apartment. It was worse. There was no care. There was no doctors or staff or anybody. Just in an apartment building by herself. Beulah Chitwood was awesome. Whenever I'd go to Beulah Chitwood's house, she had some, not toys. They are just these little coasters that you put on the wood table and you could take them apart. There's a little piece of felt and that was it. There's three pieces to them. I would take them apart, feel the felt, put the felt back in and put them together. And that was it. Take them apart, put them together. It was fun. I had, you know, that entertained me for an hour or two. She also had some National Geographic, and we watched TV, and really it was, you know, the old man was visiting her because it was his grandmother. Beulah Chitwood was awesome. I was never afraid of Beulah Chitwood. Beulah Chitwood never hit me, never acted like she was going to hit me, and uh, it was never important for my abusers to make sure that Beulah Chitwood did hit me. Barbara, on the other hand, was wicked and evil and mean and cruel. So I'm four or five years old, 1986, 1987. It's in Boone County. It's up there. Rabbit Hash, right? The small town famous for electing the dog as mayor. Boone County is where Margaret Beloved Garner was from. Margaret Beloved Garner, who's going to run away from the slavers and go to Ohio, and then they catch her, and then she kills her kids, and they said the idea was she would rather kill her own kids instead of sending them back to the... Awful treachery. I'm proud to proclaim April's Child Abuse Prevention Month in Kentucky. Together we can make a better Kentucky for our kids. Andy Bashir, Governor of Kentucky 2021. So there's a fuller, and usually if you're going up to the National Force, you go right on up here. There's been motherfuckers that's been coming up here with guns and shit. Now, I saw some elk, and it could be rabbit season or some shit. So it's it's a, a tiny possibility. They could be legitimately hunting. But why are you hunting around my house, you fucking motherfucker? If you're a goddamn good hunter, you don't want anybody in their house, in their car, to think that you're shooting at them, around them, or anything like that. You make sure you're on the up and up. You, you make sure you have good trigger control. You don't point guns at fucking people. You don't act a goddamn fool. You don't find, you know, go out into a fucking woods, and there's a, another house that's over there, but they don't seem to fuck with that guy's house. Ranch, eight ranch or something. So there's a guy, there's a fuller motherfucker right here. He just drove up here and he just sit, he turned off the machine, so he's just sitting around. I think I'm about to walk up there to see what's going on because I'm thinking, well, shit, while I'm sitting there recording this, I got a dog out there, but um, this is important, so I got to make sure I spit this out. So let's just spit out the very first memory, right? So I go under the coffee table. I'm looking for those coasters. Because this is fucking Beulah Chitwood's house. I'm fucking four, right? It's one old woman. Here's one old prune-faced, ugly piece of shit. Here's another old prune-faced, ugly piece of shit. And I reach under it, and she just yanked me up and just started fucking hitting me, hitting me, hitting me, threw me on the couch. Like I wasn't shit. And I'm just sitting there, bewildered, scared, crying, <laughs> not knowing. Wow, I really, really fucked you up, huh? That's That's your big worry, huh? Fucking Barbara Williams. That's your big fucking worry in the world, huh? That some little kid... And there was magazines that was under there. So it wasn't even like... 
And it was all fucking piled in, so there wasn't even a, it wasn't even like nicely stacked or anything. And when I saw those magazines, it was like, oh shoot, where's my? She didn't give me a chance to realize my own mistake. It was the door was shut. Where is this kid? He's got a door open. Punch, punch, not punch, smack, hit, but attack. It's an assault. Because when I turned around and I smacked the crap out of her, I didn't, but I hope you felt it just now. Just the idea of me smacking her was so fucking appalling to you. She hit me. That would be justice, you stupid fuck. The idea never actually happened, so justice never happened. That should be appalling to you. I got assaulted, and I didn't have anybody to tell. And it happened over and over again. I made a, you know, they're short old women. What the fuck? Beulah Chitwood was sweet and kind. If anything, Beulah Chitwood just didn't assert herself enough. Barbara Williams was a fucking asshole that had every goddamn thing and it still wasn't enough. She still needed to hate black people and, and tell everybody else to hate black, black people. She was overly privileged white woman. Wicked to the core. Attacks children to awaken them. Is that what it is? And then you be the same motherfuckers. Oh, these woke. So to stay asleep. So you keep on attacking me. Shove green beans. The heart of darkness. America coddled her. America protected her. My oppressors. My abusers protected her. And they loved her from the cradle to the grave. I thought my toys were under the coffee table. When I opened the doors, magazines, where were my toys? I didn't know. I'm being lifted up and I'm getting hit over and over again. That's my first memory. I had, uh, Alice was sitting there telling me how she would go out and they would find some little animal. Her and her siblings would find a little animal and her parents would let them keep them and then they would take care of these animals. They would learn about the nature. They would learn about animals, how to take care of things, how to love things. And they were out and about. So they were learning about their own environment. They were learning about their own climate. I saw a lizard the other day. So yeah, hey, Grandmama. You're the person in charge of my well-being, Grandmama. You're the authority on my health care and education, huh, Grandmama? She's a right-wing racist pile of shit. It was Barbara that said yes to circumcision. It's a wonder I survived these motherfuckers. Well, is Lucy best friends with Barb? Was she best friends with Barb because... She could identify with a racist child beaten woman who painted her fucking eyebrows, who had a big ass fucking house, who had all of her needs met. Could she identify with a white supremacist racist piece of shit? But not to a little boy that adored and loved her. I mean, shit, Grandma, can you ex excuse the confusion? I'm anxious. I don't know who you are. My parents just left and then I thought toys were here for me. She didn't know what I was doing, but it was more important that she didn't give a shit. And it was more important, I guess, maybe to show me that my parents don't give a shit. It wouldn't have mattered what would have happened. Lucy admits that she would have done nothing, no matter what anybody would have done. As soon as the door shut, as soon as they left. And you know, to give her some credit... With subsequent visits with my siblings, there is a toy, there's a closet full of toys. So now I could run to something and, you know, get into something. There's Operation, I want to say Trivial Pursuit or Scruples, some board game. There's Go to the Head of the Class. So actually, Barbara did more to encourage my learning than my parents ever did. Go to the Head of the Class. My parents didn't have books. They didn't have a table. They didn't. I didn't have privacy or peace. I couldn't have read a book if I wanted to in their house. I could not have read a book in Kevin and Lucy's house if I wanted to. Shut up. Do the dishes. Do the tobacco. Go over here. Go over there. We don't give a damn what your homework is, but make sure you make straight A. So I'd have to, I would have to get my homework done on the bus to the thing or on the way back. All, you know, uh, on the bus, either there, back, or in between classes, or in my slow classes. There are some classes I, you know, didn't have hardly any homework, and but I would have to get the other people's classes homework done, and it was...
I think I feel like the only reason that, I mean, why would my mother not give a shit if people are attacking me in my body? Because she's sexist, racist, sexist piece of shit. I'm a, a male. I'm a boy. I got a penis. My clitoris turned into a penis. So I'm not like a little Lucy. I'm, I'm something else. So I get to be tortured and exploited and attacked and abused. And what the hell could she possibly thought I was doing? I'm snooping through your stuff. I want to know what magazines you got under your coffee table. Stupid. She needed me to know that she's a violent psychopath and I got parents who don't love me. She don't love me and my parents don't love me. They don't have a heart or soul. They don't have a heart or soul or a spirit or a mind. They're not going to articulate my mind, heart, or soul. She needed to know that she's a ball of nonstop hatred and I was scared of her. I mean, I'm scared of my fucking parents. Who am I supposed to be fucking... They weren't saying do a, pe- a book report. Uh, you did some research on a biography. No, go do something. In- no, go do the... Talk to my grandchildren as if their lives mattered. Ludicrous. Barbara would not be caught dead talking to. She's going to hate you, intimidate you, hurt you, talk to you. One of the worst things was the green beans. God, I don't understand what Kevin and Lucy was thinking about with the green beans. I mean, I feel like up to this point, they've like convinced themselves and other fucking people. It's a collective fucking delusion. The reason why they need to shove green beans down my throat, even though I didn't like the taste of them and I don't like the trauma. They stink. They smell bad. I'm having to fucking pick them so I'm enslaved to them. There's there's all of it. All of it's bad. It would be like if you were rubbed with dog shit. How come you're not going to eat dog shit? Well, it tastes bad to begin with. Why would you expect someone to eat dog shit? Why would Kevin and Lucy expect their little bitty boy to eat dog shit? And then my siblings would watch too. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because people said, well, they turned out okay. <laughs> no, they're like Lucy. Lucy had a brother, Tony, and then he died and she don't even talk about him. It's like she didn't grow up with him. She didn't know him. She didn't care about him. She didn't stay with him at his apartment. She didn't try to give the extra bit of love. She needed to go kiss her daddy's ass. And that's what the fuck she did her whole life. So when her brother needed her, well, she didn't know how to do that. She's got to go milk the cows and shit. She's got to go get cow shit on her jeans. She's walking, she's a fucking loser in school because she's got cow shit on her jeans. She feels real fucking insecure about that, but your dad's making you fucking do that shit, right? Talk to her today, she acts like he can't do no fucking wrong, but fuck. There was one point of resistance where they were breaking the beer bottles. She would talk about how he would come home drunk from the bar and just take the mother, Teresa, down to the basement and just beat her up. Or she would tell the kids to go to the basement and they would just listen to them wrestle and fight up on top. So in a way, she was protecting the kids, but he was just an angry old fucking mean motherfucking piece of shit. And they were breaking the beer bottles at one point in time. I don't know whatever happened to her or how, you know, but apparently he went too far. And that was a point of resistance. But if you talk to her today, it was all fucking good. So does that mean her mother's a dumb piece of shit that needed to be straightened up and Tony deserved to die and... All that abuse that they went through is totally good and fine. And even the good things, like she don't even measure up to... Camille's would teach George how to, you know, he have a relationship with the bank. He he realized how important it was in America to have a relationship with the bank. And so he made sure his baby boy, George, had a relationship with the bank. And then lo and behold, Camille's dies. George goes to the bank, gets a loan, buys everybody else out. He owns the farm today. So to think that uh, that little bit of advice, hey, why don't you get a relationship with the bank? You know, do a little bit here, a little bit there, and then you can get a loan. I was listening to this black guy talk about white privilege. I couldn't go to a bank and get a loan for shit, not for a car, not for a business. He's sitting there saying white people could go to any old bank and get any old loan. I couldn't even get open up a checking account. These fucking prick motherfuckers at Rio Grande uh, Savings and Loan. It's not Rio Grande Savings and Loan anymore. I put a you know a thousand bucks or something in the damn account. You think they would fucking the golden rule? Does nobody believe in the golden rule? I'm smiling. I'm nice. I'm polite. And then you know the third time I go in, I told her that when I got my PO box address because I gave her the address at my RV park, that I would tell her and I, I you're I'm supposed to trust you with a thousand dollars. And when I go in there, 
She did it every fucking time. Every fucking time. The first time she had to get all my information. I don't even know her first name. But she's got my social security number, my entire fucking everything. <laughs> fucking 20 fucking pages of information. But it wasn't good enough for this piece of shit. And I'm sick of these manipulative motherfuckers. This is white women bullshit. She acted like she was afraid of me. She acted like, oh my God, I'm the victim here. I'm the one that's scared. But she was a dickhead every fucking time I went in there. That's what the bank, hey, come with us, put money in our bank, and we'll treat you like shit every fucking time. Why would anybody put their fucking money in that fucking bank? I'm supposed to trust that piece of shit, so I just told her, give me my fucking money back. And then the cops are called, and they were going to act like they were going to protect her. Because it's a man being mean to a white woman. She had all my fucking information. When I give money to them, they didn't want to know everything. And then when I uh, updated the thing, she wanted me to drive fucking two hours back and to get some proof. Why would I lie to you about where my address is, motherfucker? Why would I lie about that? I almost got my credit card, too. I, so far, I, for four years, in the entire time I've been in the San Luis Valley, I've been a Democrat, which has been fucking meaningless. And I hadn't had a bank account. I have not had a bank account. Somebody was like, hey, just PayPal me. You know, I wish I was on, you know, the up and up, but I'm not as privileged as you motherfuckers. And I don't think he was privileged, but you got a bank account? You got a mailbox? My mother doesn't give a shit about either one of those things. Because what I know about when you have to go towards a goal, you say, I'm getting a mailbox, I'm getting a mailbox, I'm getting a mailbox, and you go and then you get it. But because they these motherfuckers steal your labor right before me me getting a mailbox, they'll fuck it up somehow. They won't realize that, you know, I'm, go get it, go get it, get the car, get the information, get this, get this, it's all perfect and right. When I was going to college, they tried to fuck up, they wanted me to be homeless when I was going to college. They didn't have any books, they didn't even have a desk, and even shitty fucking Barbara who was hitting me in the very beginning. Even shitty ass motherfucking Barbara. go to the head of the class so there was like things here and there but it wasn't like god we got a smart son we should encourage him it was the opposite we were terrible terrorist violent motherfucking pieces of shit and he responds to violence so we're just always going to be violent we're always going to treat him like a scapegoat treat him like a piece of shit and he was a baby boy who the fuck wouldn't run when their fucking parents are being terrible and that's what they wanted that's what they trained you to be to be scared I've had motherfucking nobody's fucking fuck me over. Why? Because Kevin and Lucy taught me to obey any piece of shit that just tells me what to do. Oh, you're a piece of shit? Okay. I'll just do it. They're pieces of shit, so I'll just do whatever all you assholes are saying. I don't think y'all have my best interest in mind. And, you know... I am whatever you say I am. How come y'all didn't expect more? It's fucking weird. But I can hear fascist motherfuckers. You shouldn't have got into her cabinets. There's a coffee table. You broke the rules. It's her house. It's her rules. I think you just defend violence and criminality because you're a wicked motherfucker. You have no soul. So you're just on the side of wickedness. Anything and everything justifies them putting their filthy fucking hands on your body. Fuck a fascist motherfucker. You ever try to appeal to a fascist? Try to talk to him? They don't have empathy. That's the problem with nonviolence. The problem with nonviolence is you're pretending your oppressor has a conscience. What if they don't? What if the teachers and the, employ the, the bosses and the parents, what if nobody has a conscience? They're all telling you what to fucking do to exploit you in your labor, but they don't give a shit where you end up in life. They don't care who you are, what you do in life. They just want to make sure you go do those dishes for fucking $5. Make sure you go fucking sweep up that fucking thing for no money. For a promise of money that I'll take later on. And nobody did anything about it. None of my schoolmates. None of my teachers. None of my neighbors. Everybody just rationalized it. Just like when Nazis would kidnap the Jews. Nobody did shit. Just like when the KKK went around killing black people. Nobody did shit. So we're just going to ignore all this injustice right before our very eyes. Maybe it was something else. Maybe the Nazis were moving the Jews into some brand new mansions. In a gated community. Maybe you could rationalize it. No, those Jewish people are crazy thinking Nazis are kidnapping them and stalking them and hurting them. The Nazis are actually giving the Jews opportunities. They're giving them better jobs. They, they have pizza shops. 
and the so-called good German Christians would just watch as these jackbooted fucking Nazi thugs, these cops, would usher these innocent folks out of their houses and into their paddy wagons in the middle of the night. You rationalize it because you're a piece of shit. Or maybe you're powerless and you didn't, you couldn't do anything about it, so you had to rationalize it. But why don't you admit that you're powerless? It's not that you don't give a shit. It's just, what can you do? What can you do? And then you know what? When you That's the right question. Because there are things you could, you could always do something. If you give a damn. But instead of saying, God, that sucks. And hell, they might be after us next. We better fucking buck up. Or hell, you know, you can't beat them, join them, right? I guess you have to join them or something, huh? You got to go wicked yourself. What? Oh, I'm not Jewish. No, we don't know any Jews in our family. And then it was one Jewish person that turned in the Anne Frank. So basically the Nazis were able to get the Jews to turn on each other. White people were able to get black people to turn on each other. And child abusers are able to get children to turn on each other. That sucks. And maybe if you have a hiccup of humanity, then you could feel validated and go on. But a fascist defends any and all violence. Lucy says... If you would have told me that Barbara beat the shit out of you for no fucking reason, I wouldn't have done a fucking thing. So, ah, well, who cares, right? No, you've never been a mother to me. You, you've ne- I've been a fucking good-ass son, and you haven't been a fucking mother at all. I got hit by fucking Barbara, and if I get hit by this person or that person, you're just going to be a dumb, ugly piece of shit that just shrugs her fucking shoulders and don't do shit? She don't want people to hit her? Apparently, she got hit when I was younger. I don't, re- I don't remember her ever getting hit. So, I think she's a liar. She probably never got hit at all. Fucking lying motherfucker. But she cried about it forever and everybody felt sorry for her. Oh my God, a grown up white woman got hit. And then she, you know, separated for a while and said, hey, you better straighten up, mister. And then went back. Maybe she's being a dickhead the way she's been a dick to me. I mean, hey, Lucy, Kathy hit me. I should smack both of you assholes. You made me apologize to somebody that hit me. Fuck you. Oh, what? Just me smacking my hand by myself? That's how fucked up you motherfuckers are. If somebody hits me, I get to hit you back. And you got a problem with it because you never wanted me to exist in the first place. Kathy's hitting me when I'm a fucking kid and Lucy's making me apologize to her because they don't give a shit if I exist. They don't care about my brain. They don't care about my soul. They don't care about my household. They don't care if I get married. They don't care if I have children. They don't give a shit if I find a career. They don't care if I go to college. They don't give a fuck about any of it. It was Kathy hit you and she cried so you apologized for making her cry. Why don't she apologize to where I feel like it's good enough? She's been a dick every time Lucy would go to her fucking house. I'm hiding under the fucking couch and shit. And she stinks. She's mean. She's loud. She's obnoxious. She don't give me a fucking drink of water. She made eggs for me one fucking time. I need food. I need three fucking meals every, you know, day. Three meals every day and I need a drink of water. At least five drinks of water every fucking day. But don't ask them motherfuckers. One time I, you know, dared to get my own uh, chocolate milk and Kathy was a fucking prick about it. So she's not talking to me. She don't give a shit about my goddamn life. I'm hiding under the fucking couch. Y'all have your little fucking party, you fucking ugly motherfucker. Kathy's a dick to me today. That piece of shit couldn't fucking... I don't know if she's... Kathy's always been a wicked motherfucker. I mean, if I if I walk into my sibling's house and my sibling's hitting their kids, or if I hit their kids and they make their sibling apologize to me, ooh, that's ugly. No, that's ugly. No, no. Like, I was, I was trying to, you know, give them a hug and maybe I hurt their arm and I apologize. If I hurt somebody... Like I said, if they hit me, you know, if I had my elbows on the table, don't do that. My elbows ain't on the fucking table. When I say, hey, why don't y'all be good fucking parents, they don't correct themselves. They just double down and they're uglier and uglier and meaner and meaner. They're fucking ugly motherfuckers. And it's crazy, actually, when I think about, like, they have all these little friends here and there. They try to make jokes and they do anything and everything to try to fucking win these motherfucking pieces of shit over. And all they would do is attack me. They're not even going to try to talk to me. They ain't going to try to win me over at all. And I'm, you know... um straight A student, I'm skinny, I'm Ethiopian, I'm a fucking altar boy, basically a boy scout, 
but why are they so afraid of a Boy Scout? These insecure motherfuckers are so terrified that I'm going to grow up and become a fucking man who's going to run my house. Everything they did was to stop me from being who I was supposed to be and make sure I don't have my own household. They were going to rob me until the day I died. Make sure If I did go to college, make sure I become a fucking lawyer and then I was going to be their little private fucking lawyer or some shit. Instead of saying, God, he's going to college, he's doing well, good for him. No, fuck him. Nah, nah, he's going to be homeless. Make sure you don't let him stay with you, okay? Alice and Larry, Tim and fucking Connie, make sure he don't have a home. Okay, Barbara? Make sure he doesn't have a home, Barbara. Barbara was all on board. Barbara was attacking my body when I was fucking four. Kevin and Lucy have been trying to fuck me up, and I don't even, I guess it makes them look good if I'm making straight A's, because that was my ticket out of not just fucking poverty and the, you know, but out of their fucking household. Fucking dumbass motherfucking piles of shit. And she's stupid as shit. She doesn't believe in knowledge. She doesn't believe in intelligence. She doesn't read. She's not encouraging at all. So the fact that she's been oppressing me, I'm supposed to respect and authority. She just all of a sudden started barking orders. You didn't pass a test. You're not qualified. You're just a dumb, ugly motherfucker who likes to have power over on other people. Fuck you. Fuck you. In order to get the A, I gotta, you know, go through an entire year's worth of fucking school. In order to goddamn, you know, get that paycheck for the tobacco, you gotta have the, the bales of tobacco done. They gotta be done. You gotta be a good fucking, you gotta get it, It's not, you gotta be correct or not at all. So when I tell my mother that, hey, I got beat up when I was four years old by Barbara, and she says she wouldn't have done shit if I would have told her, she's admitting that she's an ugly motherfucker. She also admits that she never gave me a chance. We never gave you a chance. Is that fair? Is that right? All men are created equal. And basically, where I'm at today and where they're at today, if you treat a motherfucker like they're a god and the other person like they're a pile of shit and then act like that has nothing to fucking do with their circumstances, well, we were always shitty to him. We robbed him. We took his labor. We was mean. We never listened to him. We yelled at him. We humiliated him. Shoved green beans up his asshole. Yep, shoved him. My siblings, whenever we're at the Christmas dinner with Barbara, they would jump up and hurry up and do the dishes because they're not assholes. They're not trying to fuck over everybody. They're not, they wouldn't just let one person do the dishes by themselves. No, no, my, my siblings are okay. They're normal, except for they don't give a shit about other people. They don't give a shit about their own siblings. They don't give a shit about family. They don't give a shit about solidarity. I mean, good on them. I hope that they succeed and whatever. But I know who their fucking parents are. And I know who their grandmother is. I know who your grandma is. That racist motherfucker. You've been on her fucking side your entire life. So you're just going to keep on being a dick to me until what? I, I go racist or something? I will never be fucking racist. You've always been ugly motherfuckers. I don't want to be ugly motherfuckers like you racist motherfucking child beating fucking piles of shit. You fascist fucking wicked criminal motherfuckers. I don't admire grown men who beat up grown women. I don't admire grown women who beat up children or animals. That's not a real man. That's not a real woman. And, God, white women can be violent oppressors. That's all I've ever known. You white women are fucking assholes. You're violent, mean oppressors. Children are smaller than their mothers. She's a grown-ass woman. She can get a job. She could get a bank account. She could go get a house. Those kids don't have anybody. If they got a shit fucking, if they are born to abusers. You would think a mother would have a natural maternal bond with their children. You were in their wombs for nine months. What could possibly destroy a mother-child bond? Capitalism, cult to the father household, totalitarian schools, fascism, racism, what? What could destroy that bond? Soulless, fascist, zombie motherfuckers. They hate the light of the youth. They hate their intelligence and their innocence. My abusers hated my intelligence. They hated my innocence. And I, I reverse the roles because it's like I got to convince you that what they did was bullshit. Missouri's thinking about spanking their fucking kids on their butts. Yeah, go ahead. I dare you to spank my daughter or my son on their butts. I dare you. I fucking dare you. So if Barbara comes into my house and she reaches into a camera, a cabinet that I didn't give her permission to reach in, I just start beat, beating the shit out of her. She needs to obey. Shut the fuck up. Obey. And she has to just take it. I attacked her body. 
I don't love her. She don't know any better. I fucked her up before she had the intelligence to realize that she deserved better. That's what my abusers did, and they think they're fucking smart. 